Hey, g'day, it's Prezzo. Thanks for joining me in the workshop today. Now, I guess you were expecting me to be getting on with the Titan 60 model aircraft engine today, but I'm not actually doing that. I've got another project I need to finish first before I can make the piston for that engine, and that's what I want to show you today. But first of all, got a new sticker. Let's get it up on the board. Now, this uh, new sticker comes all the way from America, USA, a uh, place called Bellevue, which is sort of due east of Seattle. So uh, Seattle was a place my wife and I have been twice, absolutely loved it. But this comes from a gentleman named John Socha Leola. So if you check out John's channel on YouTube, it is called John SL and it says here random products and that's exactly what he does. Uh, he recently made a prototype stainless steel watch case using his Haas vertical machining center, which made me really jealous. And he does some really impressive work with tiny, tiny end mills and drill bits and taps and so on in stainless steel. He also does some injection molding and just lots and lots of interesting projects. So there it is, John SL, find him on YouTube. Well, here we are over at the tailstock for my Colchester student lathe. And the project that I'll be working on soon is to make a replacement piston for this Titan model aircraft engine. Now this is a prototype that I made from aluminium, but I need to make the, the real piston out of cast iron. And I use this one to sort of work through some of the issues about how to machine it. And if you look on the underside of the piston there, you'll see there's a slot, but there's also a, an undercut, which is very close to the crown of the piston. And in order to get that undercut started, you need to drill a hole. And if you use a normal twist drill, you end up with a conical shaped hole and what I wanted to have was a, a nice flat bottomed hole where I could start to undercut the, uh, the void at the bottom of the piston. So I figured I would use a 3 8 of an inch end mill and I would start that against the end of the piston blank and then control the depth of that cut very precisely. And I got around it when I made this one by using an indicator. But as you can see here with, uh, with any casting on a Colchester, they're all curved. <laughs> there are very few flat surfaces that you can work from. And I've seen solutions to this problem before where you want to be able to control the depth of a drilled hole to very precise limits. And it usually involves clamping some sort of a plate to the end of the tailstock quill and then mounting an indicator on the tailstock body. But with this, it's really hard to do. Now when I made this one, I sort of got around it, but it was very, very complicated. I did actually clamp a piece of stock to the end of the quill and then I put the indicator on the actual cross slide and I had that bearing on that plate, but you get cosine errors and all sorts of uh, nonsense there, and it's just, it's awkward. So, in some of the solutions that I've seen, people have used something like a digital caliper, and they've either modified that digital caliper so that it can be clamped to the end of the quill, and then they've got some sort of a mounting on the top of the tailstock. So that's what I want to be able to do. I'm gonna show you a 3D printed part that I've worked out, which will clamp to the quill, and then we'll look at how we're going to get around this problem of the curved top on the tailstock. I've taken the tailstock off the lathe and I've got it sitting here on my welding bench because it's just easier to work around it in this position here. Now on my tailstock, when the scale is set to the zero position, there's roughly an inch and a half of the quill showing. And if you put any sort of tooling into the quill in that position, it will lock, the, uh, the tang will actually lock in the slot at the end of the quill. And then when you go to eject that tooling, come back about half an inch and the tool will eject. So even in that position, you've still got roughly an inch of the quill showing that you can clamp something to without affecting how it holds tools. So the idea that I had was that we were gonna clamp something to that. And this is the, the first version of that part that I came up with. Now this is 3D printed, and you can see that it's got a slot at the bottom there with a pinch screw and when that pin screw is done up tight, it will grip on the end of the quill. So I just go on like that, tighten up that screw, and then that is more or less locked to the quill. Now in the top of that part, there's a slot, and that is sized, so it will hold this section of a uh, digital caliper, and then there needs to be a clamp plate on top of that again, and that's that part there and then a couple of screws, and that would actually hold that down onto this 3D printed part, which will eventually be made of aluminium. Now, when I thought about it, I figured that that's more complicated than it really needs to be. 
And I figured that this slot could actually do both jobs. It could actually clamp this to the quill and it could also clamp the digital caliper as well. So this is version two. And uh, I took the, the idea that, you know, the simpler the better really. So instead of having a slot on the bottom now, the slot's at the top. There's the, the groove at the top there, uh, or the pocket which will hold the caliper. And then when you do up the pinch bolt, it does both things at the same time. So with that on there, <coughs> we can now fit the, uh, the body of the caliper into that slot, tighten up the one screw, and it does both jobs. So I'm just using the idea that, you know, keep it simple. And um, what we can do now is we can modify a caliper like this one. This battery's going flat. Uh, and this is, this is a very cheap caliper, but I bought an even cheaper one. <laughs> uh, so let me show you that one. I'll show you how I butchered it so it'll fit in here. I'm sure you've seen these really cheap uh, digital calipers on eBay, and that's, this is it. <laughs> I think I paid about $20 for this one here and it's really badly made. Uh, I had to actually pull it apart to modify it and on the inside it was completely full of grinding dust. It was really uh, ragged and rough and hard to move and all that sort of stuff. So I've cleaned it. I've uh, polished some of the parts inside to make it a bit smoother but it's still a bit rough and notchy. But I figured it wasn't worth getting a you know, good quality Michitoyo caliper and butchering it uh, for this job just in case it doesn't work. Now this is a 150 millimeter caliper or roughly six inches. My tailstock quill has a travel of three and a half inches so this is more than enough. And you can see what I've done here is I've ground away uh, all of these parts and I'm just left with this section here. Now I also removed the, the depth tang off that, no need for that. So that gets chucked away. Even the locking screw we don't need so that will go eventually. And after I ground off uh, the, all the jaws at the end there, I put this in the milling machine and I machined that with a carbide end, mo end mill on both edges. And I made sure that was parallel. The exact size doesn't matter because we're going to make this part the suit. So at the moment, that section of the caliper will fit in there and it's quite a you know, snug fit. When we do up that pinch bolt, it will actually pinch down on the end of the caliper as well as the tailstock barrel. So uh, that's what we've done so far with this now. Of course, we have to anchor both this end of the caliper and the sliding section here as well. And what I've done is on the back of this sliding section, I've drilled a single hole. And I'll show you that shortly. But that's going to be the mounting point that will fit to the top of the tailstock body. In fact, if I turn it over, you can see it there. So that is what's going to screw down to the casting. That'll be basically the fixed point. And this section here at the end of the caliper will be sliding in and out with the tailstock quill. So what I need to do now is to make this part. Now I'm going to cut this out of a piece of 10 millimeter thick aluminium plate. We'll do that on the CNC milling machine. And we'll get that made and then we'll do something about getting this screwed down to the top of the tailstock casting. Some of you may recall in my last video I mentioned that the PC that I used to control my little CNC milling machine had died. Well, I had to replace it. This is a refurbished Dell computer with Windows 10 and a solid state hard drive. As this cost me $150, um, but it's taken nearly a week to get all of the software reinstalled, find the serial numbers, find the passwords, get all the drivers up to date, and get everything running. And it was not something that's uh, much fun at all, but it's going now, or at least <laughs> reasonably well. Still got a few glitches, but we're going to use this now to drill the stock that we're going to use to make this little bracket. You can see here I've got some stock set up in the machine vise, and I've just roughly marked out the bore for the quill in the tailstock and the major diameter of the outside of the bracket. I've got my wiggler set up over that center point there. See if that's all aligned. And I've zeroed out my DRO on the controller software. And we're going to drill two holes, one there, one up here, and they will get fixed down to a piece of stock. I've just got a piece of rubbish uh, 40 millimeter square aluminium stock and that will go in the vise and then we'll bolt this down to it that way we can machine the entire profile without worrying about hitting the vise.
So there are two hold down positions now and we're going to drill exactly the same coordinates into that piece of square aluminium block and that will go in the vise and this will bolt down to it. Okay, we should be able to bolt that down now and start running this outside profile. Mm, that's a good sign. <laughs> when screws go into both holes. Alright, that's nice and snug there now. So later on this hole here is going to be bored out to the same diameter as the tailstock quill. This hole will be enlarged just for uh, cosmetic reasons and then there'll be a slot running right through from the top of the bracket. Alright, well you would have heard how scary that was on the roughing pass. <laughs> this machine uh, has rigidity issues, uh, but we got there. Now, clearly I've got some sort of problem going on here. Now I actually knew this was going to happen. Uh, when I created this drawing, uh, I did that in Autodesk Inventor. Then I imported it into CorelDRAW and I edited that DXF file. It looked fine in CorelDRAW. As soon as I put it into my CAM software, it uh, ended up with those flats on that curve. Um, so, yeah, uh, actually it looks pretty cool, but it will attract criticism. So I'm going to blend that with the file. And what we need to do now is to go over the lathe and we'll bore this out to, to fit the quill on the tailstock and I'll bore this one out as well just for a decorative effect and then we'll cut the slot. Just uh, draw filed off all of those flats that were there after I finished machining that and one of the good things about changing the design of this part is that I can do this part of the machining in the three door chuck uh, whereas if I still had this uh, extended part of the bottom here I'd have to set this up on a face plate or in a four jaw chuck but here we can just put it between the three jaws We'll use the tailstock here to align everything.
<laughs> oh, it's one of the good things about this, I can check it. So, looks like that quill's going in. I can feel some resistance there, which is sort of what I want. When we split this later on, put the slot in here, it'll, it'll spring open a bit. So, I'm happy with that. Uh, what we'll do now is just face this while it's in the chuck and I'll break the edge. Okay. Okay, well that's done. Uh, I've already machined the other side, did that before we bored this out. This piece of scrap had some really heavy damage in it. There's quite a few center punch marks in it, but not terribly bothered about that. I'll um, deburr this and then I'm going to drill this, but I'll do that off camera and then we'll have a go at putting the slots in it. You can see here I've just drilled and reamed a 12mm hole where that 6mm fixing screw was before. Really no need to do that, it's just decorative. And to set this up in the vise, I put a V-block on the top of the vise and a small square. And I just aligned it with the light behind the blade of the square there and you can sort of get it to a pretty close tolerance. If you're really worried, you'd sweep that with an indicator. But for what we're doing, I think this is good. So what I'll do now is edge find uh, both edges, find the center, and then we'll mill out the slot for the uh, what is the body of the digital caliper. Oh, and I want to show you this. This is really cool. Hang on. Now, um, I've seen these, and you can buy them. They're very expensive, though. Uh, this one here is just one I made myself. And you can buy these light rings on eBay. They're not very expensive. I think you buy them in pairs, and they're called Angel Eyes, and they're basically for jazzing up a car around the headlights and I 3D printed a case for that and there's an aluminium backing ring and just a I think that's a 5 16 diameter shaft that goes up and on the bridge port or most bridge ports there's a, a bracket on the side of the quill or the quill housing and I'm not sure what it's for maybe it's for this but you can fit that up in there and in the, the little housing that I've 3D printed I've got a switch and then a socket for a 12 volt power supply and you can switch that on and off so you can see that there but it gives you that really nice sort of um, shadow free light on your work so we'll go ahead now and we'll indicate this or we'll find the center and then we'll middle that slot Alright, that's our half, uh, so we'll swap back to an end mill now, we'll mill out that slot. really close there, I think we've got another 0 0.2 or 0 0.15 to go. Oh. <laughs> there it goes. I've just uh, deburred that slightly and you can see how the end of the caliper is fitting in there. It's, it's quite firm, but I'm pretty sure that once we cut this slot here, the whole thing will spring open slightly, or if it doesn't, we can make it spring open. And then when we close the pinch bolt, it'll all pinch down tight on both the quill and the end of the caliper. And I guess that's the next thing we need to do is we need to drill and counter bore for the pinch bolt and then we'll cut the slot. 
got this set up in the vise now so I can do the drilling and counterboring for the set screw and also cut the slot in the one setup. And I've just aligned that by sweeping that horizontal edge there. I think that's probably good enough for what we're doing. So we'll go ahead now and find the centre position for the pinch bolt. I need to tap the other side, but I can do that later. What we need to do now is get the slot all the way through. Uh, to cut that slot, I've got a four inch diameter by 332nd thick slitting saw, and we're just gonna bring that down on the top of the stock there now with a 0.03 millimeter feeler gauge underneath it. And we'll zero out the DRO in that position. And then what we can do is uh, bring down the saw by half its thickness plus half whatever the, the thickness of the part is. Now I measured that just now, it worked out at 31.97. On the CAD drawing that I did it was meant to be 32, so we lost a bit <laughs> here or there, probably just in polishing that uh, after I'd done it. But uh, total distance now is 17.17 plus the 0 0.03, so 17.2. That'll bring us to the center line and we'll saw through, but I'm not going to saw through all the way. What I'm worried about is that when the saw breaks through it may pull this top part toward me and bend it. So we'll stop just short and I'll cut through the rest of the way with the file. Okay, forgive me for sticking my head in the way, but I couldn't see around the corner there. I think we're very, very close. It's just got to break through on this corner here. So there it is, and cut through all the way on the other side, just a tiniest little bit back inside here. I'll clean that up and I'll tap the thread, and then we'll see if it closes up on the two parts where it's meant to. Okay, what I've done is I cut that slot all the way through with the warding file. I put the M5 thread all the way through to the back side of that bracket there. And that now slides on to the tailstock barrel quite easily. Did open up just a, a fraction, which is good. And then we should be able to slide the caliper into its slot. And we'll just wriggle that forward. And then we should be able to lock everything up with that one Allen key. Now, the reason I chose M5 is that I've already got that Allen key at the back of the layup anyway. That's used for uh, tightening up the tooling in my BXA tool holders. So I might as well use the one Allen key for everything. And that now is locked in there quite tightly. The bracket is locked to the end of the quill. That rotation you can see is actually the whole quill rotating inside the tailstock casting. So that's very, very firm there now. That's not going anywhere. But what we need to do now is work out a way of actually holding down the digital display part of the caliper to the tailstock casting. Now, hold on to your hats. What that means is that we've got to drill a hole in the tailstock casting. I know, I know, calm down. <laughs> it's just something that has to be done. I've thought about it over and over again, and I can't think of a way of doing it without drilling a hole. But it's going to be a small hole, uh, it's going to be threaded, and it's going to have a slight counterbore in it. If it really bothers you, I could make a little cap to go in there and paint it green, and you know, you could put it in there, and who would know? But I guess that this is going to stay on the lathe permanently. I can remove it if I need to, but it's going to be so useful, there's no need to take it off. It, it doesn't seem to get in the way of anything I need to do on the lathe. So uh, I think it's going to stay there. 
So tomorrow, it's getting late, but tomorrow we're going to put the whole tailstock on the bridge port. We'll find the center of the quill and then we'll drill that one hole. And uh, hopefully we're done. So check in tomorrow. Okay, this is the setup that I got this morning. So the first thing I did was I took the digital caliper and I set the analog scale on the digital caliper to zero. And the only reason I did that was that uh, for some reason I may want to just use the analog scale, not worried about the digital. So I want that to read zero when the tailstock quill is also reading zero. Next thing I did was I flipped the whole caliper over so that the back of the digital readout is now facing upwards and I can locate the 3.5mm hole that I drilled in the back of the digital readout body. And that's so I can now align a pin with that drilled hole. So uh, before I got to that step though, I've actually locked the tailstock down to the table of the bridge port using its own locking lever at the back here. So the pull rod goes through one of the T-slots there's a nut underneath, I can pull that lever up and lock it all down and it's sitting on a pair of parallels uh, front and back just to raise it up high enough to clear the, the bolts underneath there. Now as far as alignment goes, I've put a 1-2-3 block on the end of the tailstock there. I've used an engineer's square and I've just pulled everything tight there and checked it and that's as accurate as it needs to be. Okay, so what happens next? Well, I can lower that pin into that drilled hole. That's a three and a half millimeter pin. It's fitting into the drilled hole that I've already got there. And I've set X on my DRO to zero. Now, I've got no guarantee that this caliper is actually sitting in the correct uh, radial orientation uh, at the moment, but I've got X right. What I'll do now is I'll center fine the tailstock quill and I'll set Y to zero at that point. And then if I go to zero, zero, X and Y, I can drill the hole in the tailstock body. And it's only going to be a small hole. I'll put a small uh, counterbore in that as well, so I've got an accurate seat. And then we'll fit some sort of a pin into the tailstock casting. And that pin will just simply float in this three and a half millimeter hole in the back of the caliper body. All right, that's the theory. Um, <laughs> uh, it should work. Let's see. Okay, I've used the half function on the DRO now to find the exact center of the quill in Y and now we can go back to our X position of zero and that's where we'll drill our hole. Okay, that's close enough, we'll drill our hole there. Okay, that was um, eight millimeters deep and that's the tapping size for an M5 thread. And we'll just put a little counterbore on top of that now for a registration uh, for the pin that goes into that threaded hole. I know, that felt wrong, didn't it? Anyway, it's very unobtrusive and I'm not gonna see it when the scale's on top. Okay, there's our threaded and counterboard hole that we machined yesterday. Now this is what I machined up to go into that threaded hole. Now this is just a brass pin, it's three and a half millimeters diameter at the top and it's got an M5 thread on the bottom and the height of that hexagonal section there had to be calculated. Now, <laughs> um, I should have said guessed actually. I sort of thought it was about five millimeters and I machined it to that length and then I had to keep machining that back until the scale on the caliper would sit level. But let me put this in and then we'll have a look at how the scale sits on top of that. It's 
So when I showed you this yesterday, there was a single hole in the back of the caliper, but I've added two more, and these are at 10 millimeter intervals along the back of that stainless steel plate there. Now, I'll show you why that's necessary, but if I use this hole, which was the original one that I did, I can put that over that brass pin, and then slide the scale on the caliper back, and I get everything aligned and lock it all up. Now at the moment I've got the quill, I'll just put it to zero there and I can slide the scale on the caliper back till it also reads zero, which is about there, and I'll lock all that down in that position. Okay, we'll zero this. Okay, so everything lines up now. We've got zero on the analog scale, zero on the digital, and I've got zero on the quill of the tailstock. But the problem is, when you go to eject any tooling, we come back about five millimeters, and then I can feel the tang on the end of the, the tooling hitting the eject pin, go back a little bit further, and the tool ejects, but now I've got the digital display right up against this bracket. There's probably only about one or two millimeters clearance underneath there. Now if I come back any more, it's going to clash and there's a chance that we're going to bust that uh, brass pin or damage this or we're going to bend this, you know, something bad could happen. So what I've decided to do is to have those two extra holes in there and I'll show you why that makes a difference. So now we'll move the quill forward, lock it there and we'll go into the what is pretty much the middle hole. and then we can lock it up again in the same way. And when you get everything aligned here, you just got to sort of let it uh, find its own position as you tighten it. Okay, now let's come back to 20 on the analog scale here. We'll zero that. And of course on the quill of the tailstock now, it's actually reading, uh, yeah, reading, still reading zero. But now, if I go to eject any tooling, I've got that extra run, that extra length. So I'll put that in there, bring this back. Now the tool ejects, and now we can go a lot further without any problem with this clashing up here. Now the only downside is that uh, when you look at the scale, the analog scale now, instead of reading zero, when the barrel's at zero, it's going to read 20. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Uh, I'd imagine I'm just going to use this digital scale all the time. But if you ever need to remove it, it's so simple. So just loosen that, take everything off, and it's done. So now we're back to our standard tailstock, albeit with <laughs> this little brass gadget here. Just ignore that. But yeah, I think that's, um, that's actually a, a very useful addition to the lathe. Now, what am I going to do with this? Well, I'm going to anodize it. And boom, there it is. Well, that's uh, meant to be black. It's more like a charcoal black, but I'm happy with that. So let's get this assembled now. Well, there it is, working. Now, one thing I didn't mention before was that when you were machining the pin that goes in the top of the tailstock casting, you have to be sure that this section of the digital readout of the scale is zero degrees relative to the bed of the lathe. So what I did was I used one of these digital uh, levels, set this to the bed of the lathe, and I set this on top of the scale here, and I kept changing the height of that brass pin until this read zero and after that it all operates beautifully it's just silky smooth and it's just so easy to uh, zero out your scale at whatever position you want uh, drill your depth to whatever you want uh, and you can use inches or metric whatever you like 
and for me this is um, this is a really really good solution and it sort of doesn't take up a lot of room there's there's very little downside to it but as I said the only problem is that uh, when I set the scale here the analog scale to 20 it's actually zero on the tailstock quill and of course I can zero that at that point so I'm happy with the build at this point and uh, if you haven't done something like this to your lathe and if you've got the type of lathe that has a, a non-flat surface on top this might be a solution that you can work with so with that said I'm happy to go on now and work on the next part of the Titan build which is the piston and I'm going to encourage you to come back and have a look at that when I get onto it I'm also going to do a bit of a, a workshop update I've got some interesting things to show you about what's going on in the workshop some new additions, some new tools some uh, viewer donations, uh, yeah, that's all going to come up soon. So, for now, it's Prezzo signing out, and uh, check you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year.